I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, good evening, this is Earl Erskine, uh, and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. And I'd like to introduce tonight Jackie Davidson, who's come all the way from Boise to share her story, and appreciate mm, you coming. I'm excited about it. Yeah, we're, I'm excited to have you share it as well. So, as we do, uh, tell us a little bit about your time. Where were you born, and born into the church, were you? I was born in the church, and I was raised in Bountiful, oh, okay. mostly. Oh, just up and, north here. Uh, you know, was raised in Bountiful, went to church, went, you know, did all the activities. Yeah, you get baptized had, at eight, did you? Yeah, I got baptized at eight. And, yeah. and Your family was active, I guess, your very mom and active. dad. Uh, my dad was a bishop at, when I was growing in up. Bountiful. In Bountiful. Okay. In Bountiful. And... Um, and then about, I think I was just going into ninth grade, we uh, moved to Pierce, South Dakota. Wow. And so that was that a little was bit of a... contrast, isn't Yeah, it? a little bit of a culture shock from yeah. like 99% Mormon <laughs> to, you know, 0. 0.05. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah and, uh, but, you know, they had a seminary and they had a church. It was by the high school still. Oh, did they? So, so you yeah. were able to go to seminary. Yeah, I went to seminary yeah. and um, busy, was very, it? very devout, uh, yeah. devout, and you know, st was reading the Book of Mormon, and yeah. and I was, you know, making sure that I, you know, stayed pure and <laughs> and uh, followed the yeah. the teachings of the church. Was there any ever any question in your mind that the church was the only true church and um, you know, I I, mean, I years, had a testimony, yeah. and um, I I b bore my testimony a lot. I loved giving the talks. Oh, you I did? gave a lot of talks. Did you? That's yeah. unusual. <laughs> and I gave talks in even in like the state conference one time. I don't wow! Know. But um, so I like that, and I I just really had a love for scripture. Wow! And um, so I I. You know, went to high school and yeah. graduated, and uh, went out to BYU, oh. and went there for a year. And I, that is actually when I started questioning the, oh, the what doctor. Ha what happened at BYU? Well, you're, you're required I, to take religion classes there, right? Yeah, I was taking the religion classes, and they just they just didn't seem to add up. You know, there was what, what were you hearing that was different um, than you'd heard for you know a lot the about years before. A lot about Joseph Smith um, and, you know, how he died. I, I do remember, you know, questioning that, how he died, you know. and Where he was shooting people he, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Not quite the and, lamb to the slaughter, And BYU is a little bit of a different culture, you know. It's the women go there to get married. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I, I went there to get an education, and it, it just didn't. Wow. So I was going to these classes, and I was like, you know, where's my education? Yeah. Or, you know, I already know about Brigham Young and, <laughs> and Joseph Smith. So. so, but that started me thinking differently. Do you think that happens to very many BYU students? Um, I mean, did you sense there that? There were you know, a the lot of, you know, the women, 
the girls there, you know, they... More especially the girls. That yeah, they didn't, no, they were very go to church, meet men. Yeah, um, well, maybe get married and... Get married, married. in the temple and, yeah. and stuff. So, so I didn't really fit in that well. Oh. Because I wanted an education. Mm. Was there anything doctrinal and that que you questioned? Um, yeah, I, I had a lot of questions when I was taking the the church history class. Really? Besides and Joseph Smith? Joseph what? Smith and, you know, coming out to Salt Lake and yeah. and the pioneers and... But questions yeah. that, you, that were raised that you didn't get answers to, yeah, or didn't, was it... didn't really get too many answers, and I... Th I mean, they don't particularly raise unusual questions in the, me in yeah, the it was, classes, do they? No, it was very, you know, rudimentary. Yeah, very structured, and... Yeah. So what was and raised... huge. The classes were huge, so you yeah. really couldn't, you know, raise your hand. Oh, okay. So I went a year there, and then I transferred up to the University of Utah, and, oh. and uh, it, it was so now, I just got started getting a really good education there. <laughs> well, now were you and attending classes though? At, at, I mean, ch attending church at BYU and uh -huh. going on Sundays there. Yeah. And, okay, and uh, but was that I, helping, or did you ask anybody for help, or talk no, to your dad, it, for example, about questions you had, or? No, not really. No, oh, okay. Kind of kept it to yourself. Yeah, then, kept or? it to myself. Didn't want to shake the yeah. roof off, you know. And um, again, still, did you believe the church was true? I mean, was were you questioning? That was that when I just started questioning. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I believed that the church was true. Sure. And um, and I remember having conversations with my. Lutheran friends and my Catholic friends and I, I actually went to the Lutheran church quite a few times. Is this when, when you went to the U? In, in, uh, oh. at, when I was in high school in oh. here. Oh. And so I had a little bit. What maybe, did you think of that? I, I think that might have been one of the reasons why I started questioning was because oh. I did get some Christianity. Did you start hearing a different message? In yeah. That? What was that like? Yeah, it was confusing. It was it? Yeah. Different than that you'd been hearing. But I it. still thought, well, you know, ours is ours is the right one. Well, sure, yeah. You know. One thing that I uh, kind of struck me as I was uh, kind of preparing for this today, and and what you had said was, I'm I'm wondering how much our youth, because uh, I raise children in the church as well, and I'm wondering how much we really know of their testimonies. I mean, yeah. you're bearing a testimony. You're taking seminary. You know, your dad's a bishop, and I'm sure your mom was active and everything. And they were married, married. in the temple, were they? And oh all yeah. That. So I Logan mean, temple. you had a goal certainly of probably being married in the temple. And do we just assume that our children have these same testimonies that we do when they hear a talk in sacrament meeting? They're getting the same juicy stuff that we got as adults, and the kids get it too. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. I think. Um, I think they do. Yeah. And they're so, pr you know, they're people are proud of their kids and, and, um. But I just wonder if those kids have this strong testimony that the parents think they have. I think in my case, I was just going through the motions. Of going to church. All you know, they taught me how to do a testimony, how to bear yeah. my testimony. Yeah. And, and you were doing um, it to please parents yeah. then maybe. Yeah, but I, I really did love the scriptures. Uh, okay. I used to go to church and I, I didn't really like to talk to people like in the foyer, how they yeah. all talk. So I read. would just go into the chapel and and read my Book of Mormon. Really? I loved the Book of Mormon yeah. and I read it all the time and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I must have um, enjoyed it too. I read it 30 or so times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prayed about it. Did you ever pray oh, about yeah. it? Oh yeah. Got that burning in oh, your bosom sure. and everything? Sure. Yeah. And well, anyway, so. that was just a thought I had that I think sometimes we as parents, because when children get to be 19 and 20, I guess if they don't go on missions or whatever happens, and sometimes they lose their kids and they wonder, well, what happened? They've been raised and raised like my other kids, but all of a sudden here they don't seem to be as strong in the church or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's well, you know, and it's not really, 
in, at least in my situation, you know, it's not like I wanted to go sin or yeah. It's it's just you just weren't feeling right about. Well, I wasn't feeling right, but then um, we actually had a family situation where my dad was well, my older brother was married in the temple, okay, and uh, to a new convert, and then the his wife left. She didn't want to have anything to do with the Mormon church. Oh dear. And so they got a divorce, and he was living with my parents in Pierre. My dad was the branch president, okay. and um, he started dating a Presbyterian. Oh. So this is kind of his story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he started dating a Presbyterian, so they excommunicated him. Oh my goodness. And um, my dad, it was my dad that did it, oh. you know, instigated it. And so and that it just made really you think things through a little bit. Uh, th when I found out, I was I was out. Oh dear. That was the last straw. Now, was, were you older at this point? Did I you was in school. No, in I was probably twenty. Yeah, yeah, I was in college. In college. And so it just really ripped our family apart. Oh. You know, the excommunication is yeah. it, I, it's it's damaging to families. Yeah, and the uh, expectations and the guilt. Yeah, and as we said before, and we often have this, we develop this relationship with the church, and we really don't develop a relationship with Jesus. And right. so, what happened to you when you found felt about? What did you do after you? Uh, well, left? I, I, after I left, I still stayed a member for a while. Yeah, and then the they kept sending my the little fourteen year old, twelve year olds to. <laughs> The tithing. So the tithing, <laughs> and I would just I slam it in the door, you know. And so then the bishop called one time and I says, "Don't send those guys, those little boys. Yeah. Don't do. That. I don't want to have anything to do with the Mormon Church, but I don't want to be out because of my respect for my dad." Oh. And uh, they you just he just kept. Or? Yeah, I just yeah. didn't want to hurt him, and yeah. I didn't want him to lose this a uh, second one. Two out of three. We have three kids, oh dear. and so um, they just kept coming. <laughs> and then one day, the bishop shows up at the my door, and I just asked for a piece of paper, and I said, "Please take my name off oh. the list." Actually, it was, wasn't quite worded that way, but have your name removed. Yeah, please yeah. have my name taken off your yeah. list. Yeah. And so they had the court, and I I didn't go. And then I got a letter, and I was out. Oh, so. Wow. Then I was agnostic. I was pretty mad at God. Really? I was very mad at God. So here again, we're talking about this relationship with the church and not yeah. with God. If you had yeah. had a relationship with God, you probably wouldn't have. It wouldn't have had anything gone, to do with the church. No, for 20 years, you wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. so I was agnostic for 20 years wow. and pretty much, you know, had three kids, lovely kids, very smart. Um, raise them well. If you're a good person, you should be yeah. okay. Did you feel guilty? Did you keep no. in the back of your mind thinking, "I really need to get back to no. church"? Oh, you didn't. Okay. No, I didn't want to have anything to do with God. You felt a freedom. The church. Then? Oh, you yeah, were totally free. Yeah, I was free. fine. <laughs> I was fine. But looking back now, I, you know, I feel bad. Yeah. Because there's just so much. Yeah. There's more freedom in Christ, definitely, yeah. and there's more joy. Well, so tell and us what transitioned you out of uh, agnosticism. So I wasn't looking for God at all. Uh -huh. And but he, was he for just, you he pretty much came and got me. Um, I, I was in sales. I'm a computer person, oh. tech, and in sales. And uh, I love Zig Ziglar. Okay. I kind of listened to his tapes. And so Zig Ziglar came to town and he just packed this arena with business people yeah. and they did the gospel. They talked about Jesus to all these business people. Did you want to hear that? And at I all, was or? just like, wow, that was kind of churchy. <laughs> and I was just I was kind of upset about it. And, yeah. I, and there was a little card that said, do you, you know, filling out information and it said, do you want a free one hour um, business consulting? Oh. And so I checked it, and a lady called and made the appointment, and um, it was on a Thursday, and the Monday before, uh, my husband left. 
moved out. That same walked out week? The same week. Mm -hmm. So I did the class and I was just like bawling and crying and very upset and the guy was a pastor. And so... What called you? Yeah, and it, it was all Zig Ziglar. She, you know, <laughs> I can't wait to see him in heaven, you know? Yeah. <laughs> because, um, so this guy was a pastor and he just prayed over me. I had never been prayed over like that before. Had you told him anything or much? Oh yeah, or? I told him. I oh, you told him I story. told him my husband just left, you oh, know, and was crying. Yeah. And, and he just started talking to me about Jesus and talking and praying over and me over for you. an hour. He prayed over me. Isn't that? Fantastic? And it was just that's phenomenal. so different, isn't it? In Christianity, our first time meeting our pastor puts his arms around. We didn't know he was our pastor at that point, but put our arms around us and just prayed. Yeah. And I thought, my goodness, nobody's ever done that before. Yeah. They have such a love for God. They just they just pray they over just you. Just want to ask God to help. Yeah. yeah. And so you felt that immediately? Yeah, and so, you know, I was pretty much, you know, had my three kids, and so I thought, well, I better keep this. This guy will keep me on the, you know, through my business, so yeah. I won't lose my business through right. this. And he suggested that I read Purpose Driven Life. And Purpose so I started re life. reading Purpose Driven Life, and yeah. that's how I got saved. And then just reading that book. Was yeah. it a message you just never heard before? I'd never heard it. And they yeah. had the sinner's prayer in there. And so, yeah. you know, I did this. And you and accepted I did that. Christ. And yeah. And then I started going to Calvary Chapel. Yeah. And um, I, when I first walked in there, I just, I bawled through the whole thing. I was just so filled with the Holy Spirit. And did you and just, just notice a, immediately that they were praising Jesus and yeah, God? Yeah, and, it was awesome. And the messages are just so joyful. Yeah, yeah. And you had never appreciated that as... Uh, oh, no, it was yeah. totally different. It was totally different for me. Yeah. I just wish we could get others to really experience that and feel that joy and freedom that comes it's from... It's a worship. Yeah, you're really you know, worshiping, you're worshiping God. God. Yeah. You're not just reading you know, or singing some kind of praise to the man. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Who's all, all mercies flow, you know. Yeah. And, and, um, oh, and, and Jesus, yeah. you know, and singing about how the love of Jesus. And those 20 years just washed away completely, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and, and I, uh, I started reading the Bible and I just, was that a little different for you? Oh, uh, you know, it's like the scales are off, you know, and I just devoured it. You know, everybody says that, and I just don't think a Mormons can appreciate what that really means until they experience it. Yeah. But did you ever appreciate the Bible as a Mormon? No, I never. I mean, you said you loved the scriptures, but were you but learning? But it was the Book of Mormon. Yeah, yeah. I didn't learn anything. And, and when, I was, when I started reading it, you know, it, when I was agnostic, I didn't care about Mormons. Yeah. But when I became a Christian, all of a sudden, I started caring about your family, my family, and, and friends. Um, friends, and yeah. my kids, and concern for them. And yeah, what and uh, just started learning it, and and God put me into just right off the bat, he put me into Bible Study Fellowship. Now that's called BSF, Bible BS, Study yeah. Fellowship, and you've been teaching that now for? Well, I've been going to Bible Study Fellowship for 10 years. This okay. is my 10th year, and this is my third year as a group leader. Wow. So I have like um, 14 ladies that I am shepherding through the life of Moses we're doing this year. Wow. Now is BSF so, in, in most cities? Yeah, it's all over. Okay, there's one here there, in Salt Lake. I yeah. looked it up. It's on 3900 South, 2780 East. And yeah, they meet, I like think. like Sugar House or something? No, it's just Mill Creek or oh, okay. some up there. But it's between 9 and 11 in the morning. And Mormons and non-Mormons come yeah. to that. And you don't identify which religion you belong to, right? Yeah, I, I do know that Bible there are study. a couple of... Uh, LDS women in uh, that go to ours. Yeah. So it's it's just pure. Um, you can't tell what church you go yeah. to. And they have babysitting, I think, and yeah, the children go. Yeah, children go and and are taught the Bible. So anyway, look that 
look that up, folks. And I, I know Carla, my wife, had, uh, has attended that a few times. And uh, it's it's just like deep. Really enjoyed it. Deep Bible study. Yeah. So did the, awesome. so. <laughs> So you started gaining this appreciation, but even initially on, you started seeing a difference between what the Mormons had taught you and what you yeah. were learning in Calvary Chapel, right? Right, and I I got into some uh, groups on Facebook. Oh, okay. Tell and I that. started learning. That's when I actually started learning about Mormonism because. <laughs> I, I actually went to an ex-Mormon meetup. Oh, did you? And um, it, it didn't go well because they were all atheists. They were back in the, where I was at. They've left the church because they and, know it's not true, but they haven't found yeah, Christ. So they, they kicked me out for evangelizing. Oh, you know, because yeah. They're just mad and at I the was church. just trying to tell them, don't be mad at God. Yeah. Don't waste the 20 years. Right. You know, search out God and to find out who who He really is, because yeah. it's it's a different God yeah. than the than the Mormon God. You don't need a church. You don't need a temple. You know, just look up. Yeah. Look up to Jesus, yeah. and He will take care of you. They've added all that. They booted me it. out of there so yeah. quick. But you are on some other websites. Yeah, or, yeah. And uh, I'm actually, Facebook. so I've been doing that for about six years. What's the name, what are the names of So uh, right now I'm adminning, um, I'm in a group called the Mormon Grace Project. Okay. So that's a really good one if you, it's Mormons and evangelicals okay. discussing um, the gospel. Yeah. What is the gospel. The differences and stuff. Yeah. And, the other and so is, that's a good one to, if you want to learn about the difference yeah. between Christianity and, and Mormon doctrine. And then there's a really good one uh, that's called the Utah Ex-Mormon Christians. Wow. And so that's here in the valley. Um, and similar but actually, when they're talking a about lot of people, even outside, like I'm, I'm in Idaho, but I'm still in it. Participating. And you get a lot of support, and you get a lot of references, yeah. like. This is a good book if you know, you're hurt, with it, yeah. you know, or um, this is a good book for transitioning from Mormonism to Christianity, yeah. and people ask for prayer, and, yeah. and it's just a support group. You mentioned that you all of a sudden had a heart for Mormons, and yeah. I just think that's so interesting because one of the criticisms I've been given and others have is that we left the church, but we can't leave it alone. And here you were totally away from the church for many, many years, and yet all of a sudden, as soon as you start learning truths about Bible truths and about Jesus and grace and the cross and things, yeah. you have this heart for Mormons. What do you think that is that prompts that? God. Yeah. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. You know, I... I you're, seeing, uh, you're seeing family in bondage or in not understanding. You know more about Mormonism now than ever before, right? Yes. <laughs> And um, yeah, I, I see a lot of heartache. Yeah. Like, um, uh, so should I tell them the story about the, okay. <laughs> We've got uh, about three or four minutes, so go ahead. Okay, so I, I, um, I was in BS, I was doing my BSF and I had my Facebook open. Yeah. And this young girl, she's in her 20s, she uh, started asking questions and nobody would answer her questions, so she put up this blog, yeah. and she got excommunicated. And she was in college, so her family withdrew all their oh, providence. No. And so she lost her family, she lost Just her church. Just for raising questions. Yeah, for asking questions. And so she, they put up this post that said, what, you know, this lady needs money, and so, I'm in Matthew saying, oh, yeah. uh, "Feed the poor," you know, and and um, I was I was very poor at the time. I mean, I anyway. you were homeless, as I remember. Uh, yeah, right? I was homeless, yeah. and um, I was living in an office building. And <laughs> it's it's the struggle. There's of a story Christian. there, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so God said, "Give her some money." 
And I says, well, I don't have any money. <laughs> He's like, give her money. And I'm like, fine. You know, how, how much do you want me to get? He's $50. I'm like, I don't have $50. <laughs> and so I gave her, a, got on there and gave her a Walmart card. And $50 Walmart card. $50 yeah. Walmart card. And the next day I, I got called into one of my clients and was working. So I was working two jobs, like going to work at four and then going there. And I was going to school. So I was like getting like four hours of sleep. And Thursday I just said, you know, you should just give me this job, and and they said okay, and they hired you. <laughs> and I I went from being poor to not being poor. Wow. And um, you know, I say, I actually also within the next month, um, I got a house. He approved the mortgage on the house, and I owned. I went from living in an office building to a wow. good job and having a house. Wow. And you give and all the credit to. It, it wasn't because I gave the $50. Yeah. It was because he loves me so much yeah. that he wanted to reveal himself to me. And um, it has nothing to do with that, me giving that $50. Yeah. And that is a big difference between, I believe, between Mormons. And you know, they say, well, y you got that because you gave the $50, but that's not true. Yeah. He did that because he wanted me to know him more, to, yeah. be, to be strong, closer to him. So yeah. Jesus means a little bit more to you now than yeah. ever before, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, he's just an awesome God. Yeah. Well, Jackie, thanks so much for coming. Can you believe our time's uh, wow, gone? Wow, that went fast. It really does. And, <laughs> but you have a, a hopeful message, and you know, I do, I, I I feel badly that you had to go through the 20 years, but I'm sure God did that too for a reason. Yeah, I agree. And when He sh touched you on the shoulder or spoke in your ear, you just you just uh, yeah. knew. Yeah, and yeah. and that would be my goal is it, for people to go from Mormonism to Christianity. Yeah, and well, the Bible, find that relationship. The Bible was here first, and anything that came along, Joseph Smith and everything that he added to the Bible should be measured against the Bible, not the other way around. Yeah. Well, thanks okay. for coming, and uh, we Thank appreciate you. you, and appreciate you watching tonight. And remember, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night. <laughs>